I'm late. Everybody's late. There's people out in the front out there in the parking lot. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I, I don't think we've stopped. I didn't leave here last night till about 12.20. And not just myself, but several other <laughs> men. And we were out there just having a good time fellowshipping. And uh, we had a, a new singing group that got birthed last night. So hopefully we'll be able to hear them before the week's up. Um, got more people that came in. Um, look, there's two more that just cat drug in right here. So I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's been, it's, it's been wonderful. Been wonderful. How many of y'all feel like you was in a, you got a spiritual hangover this morning? Amen. 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 Yes, it's absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful. But, uh, listen, I'm telling you, I, I, I want more of it. I want more of it. Lord, our, our motto this year here at the church is Lord, give us more in 24. So that's what we're going for, and that's what we're praying for. And uh, the Lord has not been slack in his promises by no means. I mean, we had one saved last night, folks. We should still be rejoicing this morning. It's been fantastic. I can't wait to see what the Lord's got in store, not just for today, but the whole rest of the week. Um, I've still got a few walking in, so I don't, I don't want to do it yet. But So let's, uh, let's gather around these altars, men and women which there's there's some still back there in the chapel practicing singing right now so but you know what that's what i love about these kinds of meetings i love that people can get together make connections sing and just rejoice and it don't matter what you're doing where you're at you can i mean we had people over here practicing had people over there practicing we had somebody closed up in a uh, sunday school room back there singing so uh it's it's good i love it absolutely love it so ladies if y'all don't mind singing us in there is a fountain while us men are praying and men let's gather down here around these altars and we're just going to have a good time this morning going to enjoy some good singing some good preaching and then we're going to go do some good eating does that sound good Amen. i was over there this morning and i've never seen so much hamburger meat for the taco bar in my life so let's uh let's pray let's reach reach the throne room this morning I mean, my goodness, they just, we might be a little smaller right now and morning services usually are, but that don't mean we can't have a good time in worship this morning. Go ahead, ladies.
How many hats did you say left, Laura? We have one hat left. And I'm going to just throw this out there. Somebody did offer $100 for a hat last night and got one. So, uh, got one hat left. So, uh, don't forget about that. And like I say, all that's going to benefit the Jubilee. Don't forget our offering plates are at the back of the door. We're not taking up offerings. We're letting you give that. Um, might have Brother Shook get up here and shake that up a little bit more about amens and oh, a dollar for everyone you don't give when you should. So, uh, but yeah. Um, gentlemen, y'all want to come up here? Y'all were practicing early. Y'all want to come sing us a couple congregations and lead with the congregations and then sing y'all a couple by yourself? You sound good this morning? They sounded wonderful. And uh, also, I want to let you know, they came up with a group and Brother Jeremiah was singing in it. And they're going to sing before this week's up. I'm telling you, they had everything covered out there last night. It sounded wonderful out there. So can't wait to uh, let y'all hear that. So, hey, yeah, just give us some good hymnals everybody knows and just sing them together. And y'all sing out loud with them tonight for this morning, whatever it is. Let's go ahead and stand together, grab your red back book. How many of y'all know page 114? Raise your hand if you know 114. I've never been sorry. All right, y'all sing it out, okay? saved and pardoned I have been singing every day praise the Lord blessed holy name in the dark shadow he is with me leading me on the upward way come on sing now praise the Lord trust in his blessed hope come on men Praise the Lord, blessed holy name, all the way he's exactly the same. got that this first verse and chorus i'm gonna count to three and i want y'all to shout praise the lord all right one two three y'all ain't awake yet one two three praise yeah man all right this second verse and chorus let's go ahead and sing that out all right all the day long i sing the story praising him for his wondrous love Sad repining, he 
346, raise your hands, 346, I know my name is there, all right, now y'all sing it out like you know it's there this morning. My name is in the book of life, oh, bless the name. Sing it out. Let's let the neighborhood know in the area around us know we're in church this morning and your name's in the book of life. Amen. I know. I know. Once my soul was astray from that heavenly way, and I was wretched and vile as could be, but my Savior in love 
gave me peace from above when he reached down his hand for me. When the Savior reached down for me, he had to reach way down for me. Son, when he reached down his hand for me. Now my soul does rejoice since I've made him my choice and in a tempest to him I can cling. There to lean on his arms, safe, secure from all harm, since he reached down his hand for me. When the Savior reached down for me, For making the sun to shine and putting the stars in the sky for flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue. Thank you, Lord, and for the sparrows that sing. They make sweet melodies for rivers that blow, the rain and the snow. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that he's done for me thank you lord and i just want to thank you lord i just want to thank you lord for making me whole and saving my soul Thank you, Lord, and for my home and my family and 
for life's joys that you've given me. For shoes on my feet and plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord, and for the church to worship and pray and for the freedoms that I have today sweet spirit I feel your presence so real thank you Lord for being a friend so dear for giving my sad heart cheer for holding my hand when I could not stand thank you Lord and for giving your life for me on the cross of Calvary for taking my place your mercy and your grace thank you lord and i just wanna thank you lord i just want to thank you lord for or everything that you've done for me thank you And I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. In saving my soul, thank you, Lord. You know, they're sitting there singing that song, and I was thinking about that, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I remember as a kid growing up trying to, I guess, teach myself how to pray. And, you know, as kids, as adults even, let's just be honest with ourselves, most of the time when we go to the Lord, we, we take the Lord a list. Lord, I, I, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. Lord, I sure would appreciate if this would happen. Lord, I, I, I would, I would, I'd be so grateful and thankful if you'd just do this. I, I'd be, I'd be, boy, I'd be a better Christian. Come on, help me out here, people. Boy, I'd be a better Christian, Lord, if this would just take place. Amen? All the time, we're taking him our list just time and time again and as I grew in Christ and learned and more and more I, I would try to get in my prayer closet I would realize if I would just go taking myself to him offering myself to him instead of a list to him and thanking him from the very start of my prayer I found out it's real hard to sit there and say I'm going to spend an hour in prayer when all you're doing is asking for things for an hour but I tell you what, when you get in your prayer closet and you bow on your face and you start thinking of everything you've got to be thankful for, everything you've got to be grateful for, boy, you can be in that prayer closet all day long because we've got so much to thank him for this morning. My goodness, if we just had the time to thank him. That's why we can't think about things in eternity, folks. That's why our minds are constricted to time because we don't have enough time to thank him this morning. When we get to heaven, when we get to glory, we got the rest of eternity to thank him for everything that he's done for us. That's the God I serve. Hallelujah. Got so much to thank him for. 
Listen, folks, I'm going to bring up Brother Tracy Fansler this morning. Very near and dear friend to me. Uh, he would come here. He, he probably didn't know if he was preaching or whatever, but he would come here if he knew he wasn't preaching. Um, I, I appreciate this man right here. He means the world to me. Um, he actually may or may not know this. I don't think I've ever told him, but he was a pastor of a church, and he had me preach in a revival, and I call it one of my Mount Rushmore moments because there was two men preaching in that revival, and the other one was one of my heroes, Brother Ronald Guffey Jr., that I grew up listening to, watching preach my whole life, and then this man, the Lord laid it on his heart to let he and I both preach in the same revival for a week together. So, and I'm not doing this out of favoritism because, look, all of y'all are my favorites. Every one of y'all. Every one of y'all are my favorite preachers. It's, uh, I mean, if y'all knew how much I Facebook stalked y'all trying to hear y'all's <laughs> sermons, steal some notes. I told Brother Tyler the other night, I said, uh, listen, I've heard the Crimson Grub. I've studied it. I, I, know, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I said, but I'm a little upset because my church had not never heard it. Now I can't preach it for at least another year. <laughs> so, but anyway, Brother Tracy, you come and bring the message. I don't know if we're going to have one or two this morning. We're just going to follow the leadership of the Lord. to be here this week. As he said, I would have came whether I was going to preach or not, and I feel like I'm the least among the ones that are here. And as he was talking yesterday, I believe it was, or maybe last night, I tell you what, when Brother Tyler got up here yesterday morning, I thought, man, I don't want to have to follow that. And then Brother Shook got up here last night. If you know how my leg was shaking right now. But God said, I didn't call you to be like them. Amen. I didn't call you to preach like them. And I can't wait to hear Brother Alford, but, you know, I, I'm here to do what God wants me to do. And uh, I want to say thank you to my dear friend Casey for inviting us out in this great church. You have been so, I'm from Tennessee, so y'all have been so good. And I told Brother Tyler uh, yesterday after lunch, I followed him till he got off on the balls, and then I shut my Bible and said I'm fixing <laughs> to go to the fellowship hall and just eat. But uh, first time I've ever heard him, and I don't hope it ain't the last. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just going to give you what the Lord has given me. I, I wrote part of this on the way up here Saturday. But the Lord wouldn't give it to me till I got in a long stretch straight away where there wasn't no cars because I was trying to write stuff down. I was all over the road, so... I hope I can read my own writing, but um, God gave me this thought about three weeks ago, and you preachers know what I'm fixing to say. You don't never know when you're going to use it, but God impressed it upon my heart to use it here, and if you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter number three. And when you find your place, if you would stand for the reading of God's word. <clears throat> and we know that this, uh, the first three chapters here, I believe it is, three chapters or four maybe, they're talking about the churches. But I want to drop down in chapter number three and begin reading in verse number 14. And give you the thought that God has given me. Bible says, and unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen. Yeah. The faithful, yeah. and there's that word that was used yesterday, true witness. Yeah. Yeah. 
the beginning, the creation of God. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would, I would thou work cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. How many of us have been whipped before? I know I have. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I'm going to ask Brother Chris Norwood if he would to lead us in prayer. You can be seated. I, I was sitting there in the room last night by myself and just praying and thinking and meditating and a verse come to my mind and, and I just want to share this. This is not what I'm preaching on, but Psalms 85 and 6, Psalmist David says, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? I want to tell you what, I had a lot of rejoicing going on here yesterday. This young lady that got saved over here last night, boy, I went home and called my wife and told her about it. And I said, you know, if I went home right now, it would be worth the time and effort that I've put into coming out here to Missouri to help in this jubilee. But I'm going to tell you what, the thought that God has laid on my heart, and I want you to look up in here, verse 15 and 16, he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou work, I would thou work cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of, the, out of my mouth. With the Lord's help this morning, I want to give you just a thought and a few things here, and the thought that I have on my heart is are you in or are you out? You think about that, and I want you to just meditate on that, but you know I've heard a lot of times, Brother Casey, people will be doing something with somebody else, and they'll be trying to get something together and, and try to get a plan together, and they'll say, well, are you in or are you out? Yeah. I want you to look at this this morning in a spiritual sense. We as Christians, we need to be in. We need to be working for what God wants us to do and do what he tells us to do. And you know what? He will bless us and he will give us the desires of our hearts. I want you to look here in this scripture as I was reading this. Uh, there's a thought, there's a scripture that came to my heart uh, last night as I was sitting there studying. And it's over in Luke chapter number 14 where the, the man asked his servant to go out and to, to bid him to come in. And we all know the story there. We had some that had excuses. And don't we have a lot of people in our churches today that has excuses? One of them said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to paraphrase. He 
he said, I bought a piece of ground and I need to go look about it. You know what? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't go buy no property until I went and checked it out and seen what it was, you know. And the other one said, well, I bought some five yoke of oxen and I'm going to go and try them out. One said that he had married a wife, but you know what? I believe when they come back and told the master of this, he got angry and I want you to think about it. How many times does the Lord get angry at us when we don't do what he wants us to do? When we don't say what he wants us to say? When we don't go where he wants us to go? I believe he gets angry with us. And you know what? I, I can remember when my children were young and you asked them to do something and they, they don't do it. Then you get angry with them and you, you get on to them. But you know what? I'm so glad that God gave me one more chance to get saved when I got saved. A lot of you here don't know my story, and I know some of you do, Casey and, and Tina and Ray and some of you others do, but my family's got a gospel group, and I've traveled all my life playing the piano with them, and you know what? I lived a Christian life, but I wasn't in. I was out. I was one of them that wanted to act like a My daddy was a preacher all my life, and I walked into the church with a suit and tie on every time, carrying my Bible, but I was lost as a golf ball in high weeds and I was on my way to hell but you know what one day August the 5th 2006 God caught into my heart and he changed me and I'm in now I'm not out and I'm glad to know that he gave me that opportunity to be saved I went to my mom and daddy's house. We went to a church last Sunday and sang down in Dalton, and that's the church that I was at the night that God pricked my heart and told me, son, this is the last chance I'm going to give you. And I went, and call, I went I'm just going to give you. We, we try God sometimes, don't we, Brother Shook? We, 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 we tease him sometimes. And I said, Lord, I want my mom and daddy to be the ones to pray with me. And I said, if that's what's going to happen, you give me a sign. And you know what, my cell phone wrong and it's my mom and my mom said son where you at and I said we're at Walmart getting groceries she said when y'all get done can you come over here to the house and help me and your daddy do something boy I looked up and I said man I tell you what he's giving me my sign yep. brother Alford I went over there and I got in there and I sat down in their living room on their couch and I was shaking so bad and my mom come over and she said son what's the matter I said mama I'm lost and on my way to hell and I want you and daddy to pray with me and my dad slung spit and snot all over that house and I can show you in their living room where I got down on my knees and I got gloriously saved and I've not been the same since I was a changed person that day and you know what my wife got a best friend then and everything's been good you know what? The devil's on my back all the time. You say, preacher, if you didn't, it ain't good. Good things ain't good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. But you know what? When the devil ain't got you, he's going to try to get you. He'll try to destroy you. He'll try to tear you down. You know what? The last 12 months, I've been my Christian walk. I've had people slander me. Casey, I've had people talk about me. I've had friends that I thought were great friends of mine turn their back on me. But you know what? Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5, he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He says, I'll go with you all the way. This ain't what I studied to preach, but I'm just going to give you what God's given me this morning. I'm going to tell you, he's always there with us. When we get in them low valleys, when we get on them mountaintops, he's right there with us. Boy, I tell you, I'm glad. There's been times that people's let me down, but God won't let you down. He'll be right there with you. And you know what? When I leave here and I can go home and I call this brother right here, I want you to try to figure this one out. I'm just going to talk, stop and tell you. I've said he's my brother because he seems like a brother to me. He's younger, so he's my little brother. But you know what? Figure this one out. Before he became my brother, his mama's my sister. So you figure that one out. She's been like a sister to me all my life. And I love Miss Tina with all my heart. I love this Kerr family. But you know what? They would be there for me. 
They would do anything they could for me. They've prayed for me. They've held my hand up. But you know what? There's going to be times they can't be there. And God's going to always be right by my side when I'm down in that valley. And I feel like nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. There's a song we sing, He loves me. When I'm sad, He loves me. When I'm glad, He loves me. When I've been bad, He loves me. He just loves me all the time. But I want you to think about it. Are you in or are you out? That's something to think about. There's people that says they're Christians, but they like I was. They walk in the walk. You know what? I've said it a lot of times. If you're going to walk the walk, you need to talk the talk. Yeah. If you're going to say you're a Christian, you need to act like a Christian. Yeah. My family has a, a business. and Before my dad passed away, me and my brother worked for him. And there'd be times my daddy hated talking on the phone. And there'd be times that people would call over there. Like I said, this ain't nothing that I studied. I, the Lord's giving it to me. But I'd be over there, me and him be sitting there talking, and that phone would ring, and he'd say, answer that phone, boy. And I'd pick that phone up, Casey, and I'd say, hello. And you know what they'd say nine times out of ten? How you doing, Herbert? I said, this ain't Herbert, this is Tracy. You know what they'd say then? You sound just like your daddy on the phone. I've had people tell me that I walk like him, I've got actions like he has. Why? Because I have part of him in me. When we have Christ in our life, just like Brother Shook said yet last night when he was over at the hotel and them men was in that bar, they knew something was going on. You know what? I want people to see me, Brother Joe, and know that I'm, I'm a Christian, but you know what? They ought to know that I'm a man of God by the way I act, the way I talk, the way I look, the way I dress. Let me tell you, this world is getting so churchy and the church is getting so worldly. As Casey said yesterday, they're getting so much alike that you can't tell the difference in them. I'm going to tell you what I can remember. Back when my grandmother was shot, the bobby pins would fall out of her hair. She didn't care who was seeing or her. She was worshiping the Lord. That's the way we need to be doing it today. This coming in and sitting down and twiddling our thumbs and saying, boy, it's, it's almost 12 o'clock. I wish the preacher would hush. You know what? If there's somebody down here in the altar getting saved, I'll stay all afternoon with them. I'll stay right here with them and pray. Why, preacher? Because I don't want to see them die and go to hell. I want them to be in and not out. I'm glad this young lady last night, she got in and she's going to be in till eternity. I don't care if you're here this morning and you believe that you can lose your salvation. I hate to tell you you're wrong because the Bible says that we're sealed to the day of redemption. Jesus died on the cross one time. That's all it took. He don't have to go back and die again. thought about another parable in the Bible over in Luke chapter number 15 parable of the prodigal son that one son the youngest one he wanted to get everything it was coming to him and daddy said I'm just paraphrasing daddy said alright I'll give it to you and give it to him what does the Bible say that he went out and he spent every bit of it on right of living. Can you imagine how low he was? Somebody mentioned last night, I believe it was, about reaching down below the bottom. Can you imagine he was saying that he'd rather be out there eating with the pigs, the swines. You know, he wanted to be out there with them. He said, my dad has got people that's working for him that are better off than I am. Yeah. But you know what? I'm glad to know that when he came to himself and he went home, the Bible says that the dad was standing there looking for him. Yeah. I'm glad when I stray away. Hallelujah. Brother Tyler, when I go out to where I shouldn't be, as Casey was talking last night, and I, I do things that I shouldn't do, and I, don't get me wrong, I don't go out and do, I don't go to the bars, Brother Shook, so don't think I do. 
But you know, the Bible says we've all sinned and come short. We all sin. When I get out and do things, I'm glad to know that my father's standing there looking for me, waiting for me. He's right where I left him. He's never walked away. I'm glad that he come looking for me. If he hadn't, just like that Saturday when I was at my mom and dad's, the Lord said, it's the last time I'm going to deal with you. I'm glad, Tina, that I went over and I got saved. He changed my life. My kids got a father. I tell people, my wife, we was married 20 years when I got saved. I went to the altar when I was 10 years old. I can tell you, February 7th, 1977, I was 10 years old, little old boy. I went down there with a bunch of other little boys. But you know what? When I got over to my mom and daddy's house at 318 Weiss Road down there in Cleveland, Tennessee, on, on a Saturday afternoon about 10 minutes after 7, the Lord was there at my mom and daddy's house waiting on me, and he saved me. And you know what? I've not been the same since. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad that he'll never leave us. Amen. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Am I in or am I out? I think of that song that's in the church hymnal. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Nowhere else I can find the peace and joy that I find in Him. Nowhere else, you know, I've never drunk, I've never done drugs, but I can't find that peace in a bottle that some of these people get or that they think they get. I can't find the peace in that needle that some people think they can get. It lasts for just a short time, but I'm glad this is for eternity. You know what? It ain't never going to leave us. I can leave here today and go home and come back in a year, and guess what? I'm going to be saved in. Are we in or are we out? I want you to think about that. We look over in Matthew some scripture. I know I'm jumping around, but this is what the Lord gave me. When I think about this, there's two different uh, scriptures that we can look at, Matthew 19 and Mark and 10. We see the story of the rich young ruler. Matthew says that he was sorrowful. Mark says that he was sad and went away grieved. But you know what? He come to the Lord and he said, good master, what must I do? I'm glad you said that. I watched that documentary last night on um, Brother Schrock. But if you ain't watched it, you need to watch it. Because all he talked about in that documentary was it's not by works. He kept talking about how they, they worship that it's your works that you get in. But I'm going to tell you what. It's by being washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what? When I was at my mom and daddy's house, I had an old black heart. It was just as black as the worst drunk, the worst dope addict. And you know what? The Lord poured that red blood on that old black heart and made it white as snow. I don't know how he done that, but he did, and I'm so glad he did. But you know what? It ain't by the works that we do. We've got to be saved and bought by the blood. But we look here where this rich young ruler says, I need to know what I've got to do to get this. And the Lord tells him, and the Bible says that he went away sorrowful because yeah. he had a lot of great things. Yeah. I saw something this morning as I was sitting there by myself, and there was a, someone had shared it on Facebook, and it was, a, I don't even know who it was, but he was talking about putting sports before God. Let me tell you something. You can put anything here besides the word sports. Yeah. You can put your boat, your golf clubs, and I'm not against none of this. Yeah. But when you put it before God, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. this gentleman on here was talking and he said, Fathers, let me tell you something, daddies. When you want to send that boy to these weekend, what do they call them, travel teams, yeah. and these weekend tournaments, you know what? That young man's seeing what you're saying is most important. I'm going to tell you what. My kids, they see this right here. And they know that Jesus is important to me. 
My kids know when on Sunday morning comes, they're both married. But Casey, they know where daddy's going to be on Sunday morning. They know where daddy's going to be on Sunday night. They know where daddy's going to be on Wednesday night. And any other time he has an opportunity to go. They know he's going to be in God's house. And there ain't nothing else that I will teach my children but the Lord. I've got two grandbabies. One's seven and one's one. Let me tell you something. Mentine and Ray was talking about the other night about grandkids. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'd probably go to prison over my grandkids. Now, I don't know about my kids, but <laughs> my grandkids I'll go to prison over. I hope y'all ain't watching kids. If you are, I didn't mean that. As uh, Who was it, Brother Tyler or whoever it was was talking about the ugliest and the, you know, I didn't mean it, children. You know I love you. But them grandbabies, that oldest one's starting to ask questions, Tina. Amen. Papa's got to be on his toes. Yeah. Papa's got to know the right answers to give her. So when it comes time, Casey, for her to ask me, Papa, what do I need to do to get saved? And I want to be able to show her and teach her and guide her and lead her to the plan of salvation as Sister Laura did last night with this young lady. You know what? That's the most important thing in my life is to see my family saved and know that they're going with me to heaven. I'm going to finish up here shortly. I want you to think. You might be here this morning. You might say, Preacher, I don't know that he'll, he can save me. And you might be watching on Facebook and you say, I don't know that he can save me. Let me tell you something. No matter what you've done in your past, he can redeem you. Casey was saying last night about they got to talking about the old Casey and the new Casey. The old Casey's been put under the blood. Yeah. What does he say? As far as the east is from the west. Yeah. To never be remembered. I'm going to tell you what. Rich man and Lazarus come to my mind this morning. One of them had everything. One of them had nothing. But when it come time for them to step across that line of eternity, the Bible says that one of them was tormented and one of them was comforted. When they was here, one of them was tormented and one of them was comforted. But when they stepped across that line, it switched. Lazarus got everything, didn't he? Yep. You know what I've thought about it a lot of times? The Bible says that the rich man died, and it says present tense. He lift his eyes. Yep. It didn't say he lifted. Yep. Not past it. It's present. You know what? Today he's still lifting his eyes in hell. Yep. But he says... If we could just open the gates of hell and let the lost people hear all the screams. They might have, you might have a family member there that would holler your name. Please get saved. Don't come to the, get in. Don't stay out. The rich man said, I've got five brothers. Abraham said, I believe, yeah, he said, if they're not going to hear me, they're not going to listen to you or vice versa. I don't remember how it's worded, but you get what I'm saying. If you're here this morning and you're not in, I hope that before, not because I preached, but I hope you have that little thread that Tyler was talking about yesterday morning. I hope that when you go out and you face, when I got saved and I went to work the following Monday, folks says, what happened to you? Amen. I said, there's been a change made in my life. Yeah. 
I never cursed. I never done any work. You know, I didn't do, but I still lost. I was on my way to hell. And you know what? If you're that way this morning, he can save you. I'm sure, I'm sure without a shadow of a doubt, that young lady that got saved last night, she might not even thought about that when she came to church. She probably thought, I'm just going to church and I'm just going to sit on a pew and I'm going to listen to the singing and I'm going to listen to preaching and I'm going to go to the house. But you know what? There had to be something in Brother Shook's message last night that pricked her heart and stirred her heart. You know what? When she come down here, I went over there and I knelt down with her. And let me tell you what, that young lady, was she not shaking your heart? She was shaking from head to toe. But there was a change in her face when she got up. Why, preacher? Because she was able to get in last night. And you know what? She'll always be in. But I want you to think about it. We talk about God closing doors, opening and closing doors for us. But I read something that said if you're wanting God to open and close doors, you need to let go of the doorknob. I could go to your house, Casey, and if you're on the other side of that door and you're saying come in, but you're holding that knob and I'm trying to turn it, I can't get in. But I like what he says there. That if we'd open our heart's door, he says, I'll come in yeah. and sup with you. Yeah. I'm glad that he's with me every step of the way. Amen. I woke up this morning about 3 o'clock and got up and got down on my knees and prayed and got my Bible and read a little bit. And laid back down. Woke back up at 5 o'clock and I got up and prayed and got my Bible and read some more. Boy, it's good when you feel that way. I ain't a bit tired. I, I mean, you know, God's helping me. He's touching me. Yeah. And I'm not saying this for sympathy, but I thought last night Brother Shook got up here and said his doctor told him to keep his heart rate down, his blood pressure down. Let me tell you, you ain't got no more worse news than I got before I left Friday. They want to check me for an uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. And my wife told me, she said, you better call me every day. You better. I said, honey, if I go, I'll see you on the other side. God takes care of his children. If we're up doing his work, he's going to take care of us. But I want you to think about it. This morning, he's standing here. And he's waiting on you. Matthew says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. I don't know your hearts this morning, but there's somebody that God's dealing with. You'll say, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get saved when I'm ready. It don't work that way. The Bible says that we've got to come the only way we can come to him is with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. You see, for years, it would come from my lips. I'd say, Lord, I don't feel like I'm saved, and if I'm not, I want you to save me. That pacified me for a few days. I was miserable for, miserable for years. But that Saturday afternoon at 10 minutes after 7 in my mom and daddy's living room, it come from my heart. I said, God, I've went as far as I could go. I've tried to fix this on my own, and I've done nothing but mess it up. I've been out wandering for years, and I want to get in for it. And you know what? I believe it was somebody said last night they didn't know how to pray, but I just asked him to save my soul. And you know what he done? He saved me. And if you're here this morning, Proverbs says in chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It don't say part of it. It says trust him with all of it. But you know what? One of my favorite verses in the Bible, 
and this is our country is getting in a bad shape yep. and I ain't getting into politics but I think there's more of them out there in our government that are out than they're in 2nd yep. 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 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says if my people you see I was saying a while ago that people would call me by my dad's name why because I was his I belonged to him Chronicles says, if my people, that's me and you. Yeah, that's church, folks. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, yeah. pray. That's what we've been doing every day, every service when we start. Humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. We can't just do part of it. We've got to do all of it. Yeah. I've seen people, and I'm not saying this to be funny, but I've seen people come to the altar, and they'll be a smiling and laughing and blowing bubbles with their bubble gum, and when they get down on their knees and get up and go back and sit down, they blowing bubbles with their bubble gum. I don't think they got what to come for, Tyler. Right. When you come down here and you get gloriously saved or you get what you need, there's going to be a change, and we're going to see it. But he says, turn from your wicked ways. What does he say then? I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. And I'll heal their land. He's wanting to heal somebody this morning. Are you in or are you out? If somebody was to follow you for a period of about 24 hours, what would they be able to say was most important to you. Think about that. Will they see you pick your Bible up? Will they see you pray? Will they see you, as Pastor Shook said, will they see you witness to somebody? Or you might be one of them that says, Hi, let's wait till some of these people leave. The Lord might be speaking to you to talk to this and to get this one's attention. You need to do what God wants you to do. If you say you're in, as I said a while ago, you need to walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah. On, you need to let your light shine. Matthew says that we're the light upon the hill. We're not to hide it, but we're to let it shine. But I want you to think about it this morning. Are you in or are you out? There's going to be a lot of people you know what? There's going to be people in hell that we thought were going to be in heaven mm -hmm. and maybe vice versa. But yeah. you know what? When it comes down to it, when you die and you go to hell, there's going to be a lot of gnashing of teeth where the worm dieth not. Right. I mean, there's going to be all kind of torment. Right. And you say, preacher, I might get in right before I get I die. Let me tell you something. You don't know when you're going to die. The Bible tells us that nobody knows the day or the hour. I want them to come and be getting ready to do somebody come and be ready to do an invitation. But I'm going to share something with you. I heard a preacher say one time, and I'm not trying to scare nobody, but he said, I was up preaching. And he said, while I preached throughout the whole message, there was two teenage girls sitting back here on the back row. And he said, I could tell they was laughing and carrying on. He said, I give the altar call. He said, the Lord impressed it upon my heart that they needed to get saved. Yep. And he said, I extended it as long as the Lord wanted me to. And he said, when we dismissed service, we was standing out talking outside, and he said, up the road went some emergency vehicles. And he said, the pastor said, I'm going to go see what's going on. And he went up the road and come back. He said, preacher, you know what happened? He said, them two teenage girls wrapped their car around a telephone pole right up the road. I don't know if they got saved. But from their fruit that they were showing, I don't think they did. 
If you're here this morning and he's dealing with your heart, I want you to come. If you've done seen evidence, there's a lot of people here that I pray with. I'm glad that that Saturday afternoon I heeded the call. I believe with all my heart if I hadn't, I'd be in hell right now. But because of that, I've got two saved children. God's called me to preach. I've pastored two churches. When my grandparents passed away, and Tina knows this, my family, our singing group just kind of dwindled to nothing. Kind of had that attitude of the two that started, it's gone. There ain't no sense in carrying on. So we'll just let the day family lie. Two or three years went by and God kept dealing with my heart. See, I wanted to lay my Bible down and quit. The Lord said there's more people out there that you need to witness to. So I talked to my mom. I said, what do you think about the Day family legacy? What do you mean, son? She said, I want to carry on. My mom and papa started. I said, I'm in, Mom. I I'm not out anymore. I'm in. God's put a calling on my life. Every Sunday for the next three months, we're singing somewhere. I'm preaching somewhere. See, when you get in and, and you totally give it all to Him, God will bless you. You might be here this morning. You might be saved, but you just ain't doing what God wants you to do. He said in that scripture that I read, and I'm going to paraphrase, it's like him saying, I'd rather you be on one side of the fence or the other. I don't want you straddling the fence. He says, if you're, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Yeah. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out. I don't want to be lukewarm. Come on. I want to be able, Ray, when I go back home, to know that I've done everything that God wanted me to do here. And I said everything that God wanted me to say before I make that trip home. Not because of me, because I want God to use me. While he's playing, I want every head bowed and every eyes closed. I want to ask you a question. Are you in or are you out? God want you to do something, whether it's sing, whether it's preach, teach Sunday school, whatever it is. It might be so much as you think it's so low that he wants you to come here and clean the bathroom. I don't know. Whatever God's wanting you to do, if you're here this morning and you feel that God's wanting you to do something and you've not given it all to him, would you raise your hand and say, Preacher, would you pray for me that I'll get closer to the Lord? I see these hands. Anybody else? Be honest. Nobody's looking but me and the Lord. You say, I see them hands. Preacher, I want to. I don't want to just stand by the fire. I want to get in the fire. I want to get what some of these 
people that I've been seeing here this week already. I want to do like they do. I want to raise my hand. I want to worship. I want to cry. You know, when I first started preaching, I thought, I don't want people to see me cry and be a crybaby. But you know what? I don't care anymore. When God deals with me, God blesses me, I let it out. Anybody else want to say, I want to be closer to the Lord? Would you raise your hand? Let me ask you this. If you're here, you might be like I was. You thought you got saved, and I'm not trying to make nobody doubt. Don't get me wrong. But I want you to know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that if the Lord walked through those front doors right now, you'd be going with Him. But you don't feel like you you know you're not saved. And you say, Preacher, I want you to pray for me. I'm not coming to you unless the Lord leads me to. I'm not up here to embarrass anybody. But you say, Preacher, I'm lost and I want you to pray for me. You slip your hand up and put it back down. Anyone want to be honest? Father, we come to you today as humble as we know how. God, we thank you for what we felt here this week already. Lord, I'm going to pray right now for the preachers that are going to be coming in a few days. God, you'll bless everybody that stands. Lord, I thank you for Brother Tyler and his message and Brother Shook. And God, I, it, it made me realize some things, and God, I thank you for that. But now I want to ask you this morning, there's some here that's raised their hand. Some's already came. And God, I want you to deal with heart. Just tell them, Lord, that they, they need to come just as they are. They don't need to try to fix nothing. They don't need to try to change nothing. You'll take it all away. And God, we'll never fail to give you praise. And we ask it all. Jesus' name. While we stand. You need to pray. You come and pray. Sing just as I am if you don't care, brother. Or audience, you help him. Let's do just as I am. Come and pray. As Brother Casey said last night, don't worry about who's in front of you. Don't worry about who's beside you or behind you. I want you to know that Jesus is standing right here holding his hands out. See, when I got saved at my mom and dad's house, I went to our preacher's house that Saturday night, Brother Joe, and I told him what happened. He said, you want to get up and tell the church in the morning? I said, you know what? They're going to think I'm a hypocrite. But I was. I've been living a hypocritical life. He said, you need to get up and tell them that the Lord has changed your life. And he said, let me tell you this. It don't matter what they think about you. It's what he knows about you right here. That's what's important. We got some more coming.
Church, you want to see more people get in this year? You need to lift this young man up over here that's your pastor. You need to stand behind him and hold him up. Great things have happened here in the short time he's been here. But you know what? If we give it all to him, what God can do. I, I got a special request to make um, this young man over here, Brother Micah. If you don't know this young man over here, he is a very, very special young man. And I'm not just saying that lightly. Talk to him for 10 minutes, you'll find out real quick. Uh, you'll find out the Lord has the ha his hand on this one right here. I, I'm, I have the utmost confidence standing here even saying that. I've heard this young man hear a sermon and quote it right back. He'll preach it back to you better than the preacher preached it. Knows his Bible. Studies the Bible. I, I give him a book the other day out of my library and he's telling me about every chapter he's reading after he reads it. He's, fine. he's got a new Bible. Uh, one of the Rock of Ages Bibles came in and said, look, I've highlighted this verse. I've been going over this verse. I want our men to come around and gather and pray around him. Mike, stay right here, buddy. Because I, I don't know if you know this or not, but the devil doesn't want our young kids to be Christians. The devil doesn't want good Christians being raised up anymore. Um, the devil doesn't want someone like this to make an impact. Someone like this to stay in the word. And let's be honest with ourselves, it's a lot different atmosphere for a young kid these days than it was when a lot of us were growing up. I, I talked to I talked to Micah this morning. I'll just tell you, Micah's been dealing with some things, and it's just the devil trying to throw roadblocks in his path. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So I remember in Jubilees when I would grow up, all the men and preachers would circle around the kids and pray over them. Brother Shook, you remember that? I remember my grandfather having preachers at revivals all over this country circle around me and pray. And if you believe that'll make a difference, I want us to gather around young Micah this morning. And I want us to come down here and pray over him.
That's what we needed. Um, I like the fact that people realize that they're not as close as they should be. Um, I like the fact, too, though, that he is right there, no matter how many steps we've taken. You can go one step one way or a hundred steps that way. It just takes one to get back. Don't make a difference. What preachers have came in since, was it yesterday morning? Yesterday. Since yesterday morning. Uh, one, I'm trying to count here. Four, five. Look, y'all, y'all, y'all are killing me. We got one here, one here. All right, everybody sit down. <laughs> okay, if you got here after yesterday morning, morning. Stand to your feet. One, two, three, four, five. Five of them? Five of them. Awesome. Okay. We got something for you. Just want to let you know just even getting here, it's an honor that y'all decided to come and make it this far. Brother Zach back there, thank you, you can be seated. They'll get it to you. Brother Zach back there, he probably hates my guts. but it's okay, I hate his. (laughs) Called me this morning, and I was in the shower and didn't get his phone call, and then Brother Shook texted me and said, Zach's down here and don't have a room. Well, they canceled Zach's room because he got in later than checkout, or they were going to, but I had it already figured out. I said, I'll just go over there and check in for him. Well, I checked in, and they said they didn't have a room for him. <laughs> so, but, uh, but no, everything worked out, and we're going to be just fine with it. And uh, we'll fight it out in the parking lot afterwards. Because <laughs> did, didn't y'all drive all night, brother? Yes. Yeah, drove all night and still came to church this morning. How about that? Hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we're, we're a little early but I also don't want a preacher to have to rush. Um, so, 
how about, well, he's already left. But we'll just do this. We'll just have a little bit more time for fellowship. Give them about 10 or 15 minutes over there to get set up and everything. They just left out just now. So, so yeah, give them about 10 minutes, maybe 15. It's 12 o'clock. 12.15, we'll be over there eating. Does that sound all right with y'all? And I want, uh, if you can, try to get here and hang out and fellowship and get to know people. Because I'm telling you, last night we had an absolute blast. Did we not, fellas? I mean, it, it was wonderful. I mean, I told somebody, I said, my jaws were sore before I went to bed last night because I was laughing so much at some of these crazy folks. Listen, bro, Brother Billy, this, this will kill some time. You'll get a kick out of this. Brother Billy Wood, raise your hand back there, brother. Please meet this gentleman. Please meet this gentleman. But I'm going to tell you, when you meet this gentleman, he goes to Africa three times a year and not hunting, being hunted. Um, no, he goes over there to Malawi, not Maui. Malawi. So don't let him try to sell you on a trip to Maui. You ain't going to Maui. You're going to Malawi. Okay? Goes to Africa three times a year. And I was, I, I'm interested, but he's trying to sell Brother Joe on it, trying to sell Brother Tyler on it. And we're over there just, I'm, I'm sitting back loving it because he, he is, he's selling this trip, folks. He's like, you're going to Africa. And I promise you, you're going to be the same way. You're, you're, the first, first 10 minutes you're talking to him, you're on a plane, you're there, your schedule's canceled. And then he says, yeah, so we get in this boat to go to the village that we're going to and we got to miss all the hippos. You're out on Africa. <laughs> you're done. Amen. But then he goes, listen, Brother Tyler knows exactly what I'm talking about. And then all of a sudden he still, he goes and he'll pull up a video of these tribes that come together from all over. I mean, he's about to have a spell out there when just when he's trying to talk about it. And then he shows us, we hear how they sing and how beautiful it is. I don't understand a word they're saying, but my goodness, it's good. And it's got some juice on it. And, but it's people from all over that come together and all of a sudden make this beautiful harmony together. And all of a sudden I'm going back to Africa. But then lines when you get off that boat that goes past the hippos i'm out on africa again and this was this was the coup de gras moment he's got us sold he he says uh what what was the gentleman's name brother brother billy come on up here you got to tell this part come on up here you got to tell this part because you tell it way better the, the gentleman that uh from georgia tate was it frank what was it i don't know Come on, come on, you got to tell this part. You'll lo they'll love it. They'll love it. Brother Billy Wood, give him, a, give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. The one that you took into the... <laughs> the one that you took to the... Uh...